Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala rasulillah. I'm Brother Ali with Face to Floor. Uh, the website, the blog is face to floor.wordpress.com. Uh, inshallah, we're going to do this is uh, for the month of February 2015. It's actually today's the 31st of January, but for the month of February. Uh, inshallah, what I'm going to do is do a reading of really the first series that I did on my blog, face to floor.com, face to floor.wordpress.com. Uh, and it's entitled Advice to a Poor Black Muslim Youth. Uh, it was written in response to an article that a man named uh, Gene Marks wrote for Forbes magazine. Uh, he wrote it, I believe the title was, uh, If I Were a Poor Black Kid. And he was writing it, he's living in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and he's writing to, uh, as if he were writing or giving advice to uh, uh, black youth in the inner city of West Philadelphia. And actually I lived in uh, West Philadelphia for most of the 90s, uh, MashaAllah. So I, I know the name. I'm very familiar with the area he was speaking of. Um, MashaAllah. The um, so anyway, the the article was pretty fair-minded. I, I mean, he was just saying that these are the skills that you're going to need in order to survive in the 21st century. And inshallah, I'll read from here. But MashaAllah, the the response from the 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 liberals and what I call the black apologists was uh, it was an over to, over the top response. I mean, inshallah, let's read inshallah, we'll go right into it. He says, as I, I, I am writing this in part as a response to the article, If I Were a Poor Black Kid, written by Gene Marks. I don't have a problem uh, with the article per se, but I have a problem with the act reactions from the liberals and the black apologists. And their responses pretty much explain why the quote unquote, the hood, is in its deplorable condition, despite of the government dumping billions of dollars into the inner cities. Uh, what they, what the the liberals were saying and the black apologists were saying, was that this is a very patronizing uh, advice. This is a very patronizing article. Uh, this is an, another example of of the the white upper class or middle class speaking down to black people, and. Uh, as a Muslim, we accept the truth from whomever says it. And it's not necessary to investigate the motivation of a person saying something to recognize the truth of what is being said. If someone tells you something that's true, someone gives you sound advice, then take the advice. If a crackhead comes to you and tells you don't smoke crack, you don't say, well, I'm going to dismiss your advice because you're uh, a, a crack user. No, if someone tells you to do, do something which is good, then you don't reject the advice because either the person doesn't practice it himself or he even doesn't believe in what he's saying. But if the advice is sound, then take good advice. This is the way of wisdom. Um, but this isn't the way of the, uh, if I, again, as I mentioned, I'll talk a lot about, this isn't the way of cultural Marxism, which is the dominant, that has become the dominant uh, operating system for much of black America now. Uh, the article goes on, the blog goes on to say, Having lived for about eight years in the very neighborhood that Marx uh, writes of, working in Dawa, Islamic community activism, and as an Islamic teacher, and also as an adult literacy instructor, I can speak from experience about the woes and the solution to the life in the inner city. So, first, let's, let's get first things first. And mashallah, you are, if you are born black, of this is by the will of Allah, and you were born poor, you're in, meaning you're to a poor family, poor circumstances, this is by the will of Allah, get over it. Because on the day of judgment, you are not going to be held accountable for the color of your skin or your physical features. So, so get over this. This doesn't mean that there isn't racism. This doesn't mean that there isn't discrimination based upon how you look. But ultimately, you are not going to be judged by your Lord for your physical appearance. And you are not going to be punished because you happen to have been born to a poor family. This has nothing, you, you're not rewarded or punished for that. This is what Allah Ta'ala has willed eternally for you to be in these circumstances. And you, and as we said on the day of judgment, you will not be held accountable or responsible for the color of the skin, of your skin, or the circumstances in which you were born. You will be, and I'm saying you, all of us, will be, however, as an accountable person, responsible for what you believe, what you say, and what you do in this life. And you are obligated to obey your Lord 
regardless of how little money is in your pocket or what you may look like. This doesn't change it. You're still, we are, our duty is to obey the one who created us. Now, now with that out of the way, let's get down to the matter at hand. And what's the matter at hand? Your well-being in this life and the salvation of your soul in the hereafter. Except that you are on the path, uh, except that the path you are on is not going to interest everyone. What, what is going to be discussed in this series, for, for many people it's not going to be appealing because it requires self-reflection, self-examination, and it requires self-rectification, fixing oneself. And this, again, is, is completely contrary to the dominant mode of thinking that has become today. This was not always the case in black, in, 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 uh, black culture. But now the dominant way of thinking is that my problems are due to institutions or people beyond me. And my problem, and, I, and I'm not responsible for myself, that I am a victim and that I am not responsible for myself. And, and Islamically, this does not work. Indeed, we recognize injustice. We speak out against injustice. But we are ultimately responsible for our own personal rectification. This is it. And again, on the day of judgment, you will not be punished because the ruler of your society or your community was a tyrant. You will be punished or rewarded according to what you believed, according to what you did, and according to what you said. And it says, uh, so this is not the path for everyone. Many, many people will not reject, will, will not accept this. They will reject it. And, and you will see the streets devour and defecate upon many of those around you. You will, you will likely find opposition from your family, from your quote-unquote friends and peers. You will encounter obstacles in your environment and from the larger society at the same time if you are sincere to Allah in your desire to excel and improve yourself and others. Allah has promised support from places you could not anticipate. Where do you begin? Okay, what's the first step? Okay, we're talking about, okay, you, mashallah, you're in the hood. You don't have a lot of money. You see a lot of madness going on around you. What, what's the first thing that you need to do to fix your situation? Step one, where do you begin? You have to start with getting clarity in the creed. You have to, and, and, and you'll find some of, uh, you, you'll find some uh, Muslims or people who are at least professing to be Muslims, and they will tell you, we don't need to go into too much detail about the matters of the creed because this causes confusion, which is, which is absolutely not true. You need, when you know the creed as the Sunni Muslims have presented the creed throughout the centuries, you have a level of intellectual clarity that cannot be gained otherwise. So don't let people try to tell you, oh, we don't need to talk about the matters of the creed beyond, as some might say, the five pillars and the six articles of faith, and we don't need to go into any more details. We, it is an absolute necessity, meaning in general, for many Muslims to acquire the details of the creed so that they can protect themselves and defend the religion of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So among, in, in, now this is in brief, what do you need to know to get started? You must know that your Lord, you must know who your Lord is so you can worship Allah properly. That is, your Aqidah needs to be correct. This universe must have a creator, for it could not have brought itself into being. Know that the creator's proper name is Allah. Allah is one. Not in the numerical sense, but there's only one creator. No one is the creator except Allah. Allah is beyond need or comparison, meaning we don't mean beyond in directional sense, but beyond need and comparison. Allah has power over all the creations, and Allah knows everything without exception. Allah knows what was, what is, and what shall be. Nothing is hidden from Allah. Allah has no size, and Allah has no shape. Allah is not an object, and Allah does not take up space. Allah is not an image. Allah exists without a place or direction. For Allah, the Creator, existed before direction and place, and Allah did not change after creating direction and place. Allah, the Creator, is not a spirit, quote-unquote, or a soul, but Allah is the Creator of the spirit. Allah is not light, Allah is not darkness. Allah is the creator of light and the creator of darkness. Allah is absolutely different from the creations. Whatever you imagine in your mind, Allah is totally different from that. Uh, for more on the creed, 
my advice is to begin with a very short uh, treatise called the Aqidah of Ibn Asakr. It's only one page long, but it talks about what's called Tawheed, the belief in the oneness and perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and memorize it. Learn it, inshallah, learn it and memorize it, because through memorization, one, you are training your mind, you are disciplining your mind to focus. And by memorizing, you will be internalizing this knowledge. And, you're not, and your understanding of this knowledge will grow as you internalize it. Also, know, meaning understand, that Allah sent prophets. Prophets are men who received God's revelation. The prophets are the very best of creation. They are all men of the highest honor and the highest dignity. And they were all Muslims. The prophets never worship anyone or anything other than the Creator, Allah. The prophets never, ever committed major sins like more murder or fornication. And they did not commit minor sins that would indicate a baseness, a lowness of character. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the last and the greatest of the prophets. Learn about his life. Your salvation is based upon following his example. And again, remember, the prophets are the greatest of the creations. Do not dare ascribe something unbefitting to them. Also, uh, be, also be warned about apostasy. Uh, in Arabic it's called riddah, blasphemy, meaning for, for a person to commit blasphemy, a Muslim, to commit blasphemy, meaning he was a Muslim, then something occurred that caused him or her to leave Islam. So you need to be educated about this matter. So we'll talk about this briefly. Uh, so be educated, be warned about apostasy and deviant factions and misconceptions. Apostasy means for a Muslim to commit blasphemy. In Arabic we say kufr. That is to believe or say or do something that would terminate one's Islam. Such as, for example, for one to think, take as a conviction, not just a, 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 a stray thought comes through the mind, but to take as a conviction that Allah is a body, or that Allah is in a location, or a direction, or that Allah is literally everywhere. And we don't say God is everywhere. We say that Allah, the creator of the wares, of the places, existed before the wares. Allah knows about everything everywhere. Allah has power over everything everywhere. Without Allah being there, Allah exists without a place. Likewise, treat the, you know, we're talking about apostasy and how to avoid it. Treat the religious papers properly. Do not throw religious books or papers in the trash or step on them. This is blasphemy. This is blasphemy. This is showing disrespect to the religion. Do not help others in disbelief, for that is disbelief in itself. Don't help others to blaspheme, because doing so is blasphemy. Also be careful with the tongue. Weigh your words before you speak. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that most of the sins of humanity come from the tongue. Insulting Allah, the Prophets, the Holy Quran, and the angels, and the like, entails disbelief, blasphemy, kufr, wa billah. And this, that's the case whether one said those words with or without conviction, or in a state of anger, or in a state of delight. Claiming something that is permissible when it is forbidden entails blasphemy such as claiming that alcohol drinking is allowed. This is something commonly known among Muslims, it's not allowed. If someone says that alcohol drinking is allowed in Islam, this is blasphemy. This is not the same as the one who drinks alcohol or even sells alcohol. That if they do these sins and they recognize, they don't reject the fact that they are sinful, then they don't blaspheme, but rather they are committers of an enormity, a major, major, major sin. But they do not blaspheme because they recognize the authority of the religion, but for whatever reasons they choose to disobey Allah. But they're not belying Allah. Belying Allah Ta'ala is blasphemy. Even if one is joking, or one is uh, joking or not being serious, if a person says a statement of blasphemy, then they have left Islam. Now, also be warned of deviant factions, deviant groups that are out there, because you need to know who's who. It's not the case of let's put our differences aside and let's all get together and we'll sing uh, Kumbaya. It's not like that. It, you need to have clarity. 
When you have clarity in the creed, as we talked about the proper belief in Allah just a few moments ago, having clarity in the creed, this will help you discern, tell the difference, distinguish between what is right to believe about the Creator, Allah, and what is wrong to believe about the Creator, Allah. So it is very important, and this cannot be emphasized too much, be clear that you want, we want to be united with people who are sincerely desirous of believing in God properly and obeying, uh, and obeying God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and people who are calling people to bad and vile beliefs about God in the name of Islam, there is no way that a sincere Muslim can unite with such a person. And it says, as for the deviant factions in the big cities, the main group you will encounter are the so-called Salafis, or the Salafiyya uh, Da'wah. And they are known to the Sunnis. This is what they refer to themselves as. They are known to the Sunnis as the Wahhabis. These are Wahhabis. All the stuff you hear about Saudi Arabia, and what's, these are the Wahhabis. This, this is who they are. Now, the, the so-called Salafis, you meet these guys in the hood, and they'll tell you, oh, there's no such thing as a Salafi. No, these are the Wahhabi, or there's no such thing as a Wahhabi. The, these are the Wahhabis. These, these people who are involved in these acts of terrorism. I'm not saying these guys in the hood are, are, are terrorists, but they are following the, the ideology, the ideology and the theology, the belief, the Aqidah. They are following the Aqidah of a character named Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, and inshallah, we'll, we've talked about him in other videos and we'll talk about him some more in the future. Th th these people from the beginning, this character and his followers from the beginning, they were terrorists. And they only started about 250 years ago. They have no historical connection to the Salaf who lived in the first 300 years of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad So these people, meaning the so-called Salafis, they pray to a giant, imaginary, unidentified, extraterrestrial, shadow-casting object with a smiling face, fingers, one shin, and two feet. They are not Muslims. They are praying to an object, meaning an imaginary object. They are not Muslims. They are not worshipping Allah. This thing I just described, and this is what they pray to. This is what they write in their books. They attribute to God. They, 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 they are not worshipping Allah. If someone is worshipping a, a cow, and he calls that cow, وَيَّذُ billah. He says that cow is Allah. You say, well, he's not a Muslim, because the, the cow is not God. Likewise, the one who prays to something that's in a direction, that has a size, that has fingers and eyes and a shin, he's not praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he's not a Muslim. In reality, they are praying to a figment of their imagination. And we will talk about why they believe this. They misconstrue, they misunderstand verses of the Qur'an, and, and this is why they, they, they regard their, their Lord, they regard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a low sense. That's why they attribute to God being something with size and dimensions. And it says, remember, Allah is not a body, Allah is not an object, Allah does not have a, a direction or place. Size, direction, and place apply to objects, and Allah is not an object, nor is Allah similar to an object, nor is Allah similar to any other creation. Also, if you're out in the, if you're in the hood, if you wish, you, you still may encounter people from the so-called nation of Islam. And also, they are still around, the so-called nation of gods and earths. The so-called, uh, they call themselves the five, also known as the five percenters. These people are around, and again, they are not Muslim. Why do we say that? Because we look and see what do they say about God. You don't have to go into all these other issues. What do they say about God? Do they believe in God properly or not? They do not, therefore they are not Muslim. For example, what do they believe? These people claim that Allah is the Asiatic black man. This is blasphemy, period, khalas. And Elijah Muhammad, he claimed that there were many Allahs. And then he claimed that Allah was born to a white woman in the year 1877. But then he says the white people are devils. That this is there, but this is not Islam. That you had the so-called nation of Islam, you have the so-called nation of Islam, and then what spun off from that, one of the renegade groups was uh, started by a character named Clarence 13X, and he started this so-called uh, the Nation of Gods and Earths. And, and if you look in the blog here at Face to Floor, you will see uh, the, in a site, in a, in a, a post entitled um, Islam and Hip Hop, there's a little bit more background about the so-called, uh, or let's say the five percenters. So these people, they believe that God is a human being. And this is blasphemy, because in reality Allah is beginningless and free of need. How could the human being be, how could the human being 
be the eternal creator of the universe, when the human needs the creations in order to exist. We need food, we need water, we need shelter, we need air, we need to breathe. We need air, we need to breathe. We occupy space. We are dependent upon space for our existence. Allah, the creator of space and place, exists without space or place. Also be warned of the likes of the Ahmadiyya and the Qadiyaniyya. These people, they claim, to, they claim that there is a prophet after Prophet Muhammad, and this also is a blasphemous belief. And, and they are not so active now, but they used to be more active in the inner city. Um, the, 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 inshallah, we will talk about them some more. This group came out of uh, what is now Pakistan. This is another deviant group, but alhamdulillah, their, their fitna isn't nearly as uh, bad as it used to be. They, they have faded out in many places. Continuing, among the greatest challenges you will face in the beginning of your journey is the difficulty in finding knowledgeable and trustworthy people. You, when you seek the knowledge, investigate and see what the teachers or imams say about the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Ibn Baz, Al Albani, and Uthaymin. Uh, if those uh, teachers or imams, as I say, if they praise these characters, if they speak highly of these characters, then it's a good sign, it's a strong sign that they are Wahhabis. So if you find, you need to investigate when you are seeking the knowledge. You need to ask, well, what do you say about this guy? Like, you just want to see, does he follow this person or not? So if they praise people like that, then this, tell, this, should be, this is a warning to you, that these guys are probably influenced by the so-called Salafi movement. Uh, and if that's the case, then, then avoid them. Avoid them, as some might say, avoid them like they had leprosy. Also, investigate and see if these teachers are educating the students and their, their community about apostasy, what we mentioned earlier, the beliefs that would, or beliefs or actions or statements that would nullify a person's Islam. See, investigate. Are they talking about these issues? Are they educating Muslims? Okay, be careful of these beliefs. Be careful of these misconceptions. Be careful of some of these books or these websites that are teaching improper, improper things about the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or about the Prophets, or about Islam. So, investigate and see if they're educating people about apostasy. If they are not informing Muslims about the matters that would nullify their Islam, it is a sign that either they are ignorant, they don't know what these issues are, or they have some kind of ulterior motives. Be all the more warned about those people who are telling their students or their followers not to learn about the matters of apostasy or about the, ma the detailed matters of the belief. In a society that is infected with blasphemy to the, uh, in God and in the prophets, like America is. Talk about blasphemy, you open up the TV, you see all kinds of blasphemous statements. Uh, now you, with the trend of atheism growing in the society, the society is drowning in kufr, blasphemy. So if you have people and they're telling you don't go into this matter, this, this really is a sign that they've got some kind of agenda. This is a sign that they don't want you to learn about this. Why? Because when people are educated about uh, apostasy, about blasphemy, then their ear becomes sensitive, and they become more critical of what other people say, meaning people who are representing Islam, for example. For example. And they examine the statements of others so that they, they want to see, is this person teaching the truth? So if you find some people, and there are people now, if you wish, on the circuit who are out there and they're telling people, don't go too deep into the matters of, of the creed, don't, don't discuss matters of apostasy, don't talk about the issues of kufr. This is a clear indication that these people have some kind of agenda and their, their objective is not a, a, a concern or their objective is not for the well-being of the Muslims and a concern and love for, for, for the Muslims and, and protecting them and educating non-Muslims so that they can be guided to a proper understanding of Islam. Okay. Now, God willing, this is the end of part one. So God willing, in part two, we will, uh, we will talk about self-education. This first entry, the main thing is you have to acquire the basic obligatory knowledge of the religion. And you need to know some details, a, a good amount of details for your safety and security about the matters of the creed, to focus on the matters of the creed so that you can protect yourself. There are a lot, in, in, in a short blog, I can, a vlog, I can't go into details. 
But inshallah, if you look back on the face to floor.wordpress.com, there are lots of entries about the creed, and it's particularly about belief, the belief in the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to learn these matters and get clarity because this is what ultimately will matter. Ultimately, what matters is the belief that you die on regarding your Lord and His prophets and, and the religion of Allah, meaning the religion of Islam. So acquire the knowledge of the creed. And, and it will be a challenge to find trustworthy people. There, there are brothers, inshallah, or sisters, if you contact me, I can put you in contact with, inshallah ta'ala, that you can, can really acquire a lot of knowledge. I, I'm just a guy trying to share. But there are brothers I know and sisters, mashallah, who have acquired an extensive amount of knowledge and they can help you uh, a, a lot and you can get a, go a long way with this knowledge. So inshallah, the next, like I said, the next post we will be talking about self-education, meaning related to uh, secular matters. Of course, religiously we cannot uh, educate ourselves. We have to acquire the knowledge in the proper way and that means acquiring it through trustworthy teachers. And inshallah we will talk some more about this in the future. Walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala rasulullah.